Speedway Show is proudly brought to you by Essendon Mitsubishi. Love that car. A Plus Powder Coating. Proud sponsors of the Dickies Cup at Avalon Speedway. Online Magazine. Australia's only free online Speedway magazine. And Commercial Automatics. Service, repairs and conversions for truck and bus automatic transmissions. In this program, we look at why a successful racer Brett Milburn stepped aside to put American Sprint Car outlaw Shane Stewart into his car for this year's Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic. Brett Milburn, for 2017 Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic, you elected to uh, step out of the seat and put Shane Stewart in. What was the process behind that? Oh, look, we've um, the last few years we've been... We, we believe we've been reasonably fast, but um, I think we're still lacking maybe that tenth of a second a lap that we, uh, we're we there, but not quite there. So uh, we're trying to learn a bit. And also, you know, Shane's one of the best drivers in the world, and we hope that uh, we can learn a bit off him and, and a guy we've got coming over to uh, set the car up. And hopefully, we you know, between the two of them and our guys working with them, hopefully we can learn a bit and um, make ourselves a bit faster. Well, you know, there's, you can't deny his credentials. He's a 2010 champion, and, of course, uh, he's the... The paid driver of Kyle Larson in the Larson Marks entry. Of course, you brought Kyle Larson out for his classic debut a couple of years ago. So you've got everything you need, I think, to uh, get a good result this weekend. Yeah, look, um, Cooley's given us some good cars. We've, uh, we've got a couple of cars together for him, and, you know, he settled into that last night really well. So um, if he can keep rolling that into the Grand Annual Classic, we'll be uh, extremely happy. Um, our motors are running good at the moment. Um, we, we seem to have a good spares package. And um, at the moment, we've probably got as much as I've ever had, and we've, uh, we've put everything we can into it to try to give him the best opportunity to uh, show his ability and his talent, which um, there's no doubt, you know, he's a King's Royal champion and World of Outlaws consistent winner. And, um, yeah, he's been driving for Kyle Larson as well, which it was good to have Kyle out years ago. And, you know, it's, I suppose, a good thing now to have one of his main driver or his main driver come out and uh, hopefully show us what he can do. And uh, as part of the package, you've stepped up also. You got Pete Capehorn out of uh, retirement. Yeah, look, we uh, managed to get on to Pete Capehorn and we thought that um, hopefully, well, we thought Pete and Shane could work well together and um, they proved last night they started getting a grip on the car really well and um, Shane was driving that thing extremely well and Pete had the uh, had the car rolling around real nice. And I think that's, to make any team good, it's hard to bring a driver over and try to do one or two or three shows and have him settled into a car and settled into a crew chief and be winning races. But I think uh, between Shane and Pete, I think they can uh, hopefully do that. A lot of motorsport is about ego. And uh, you yourself are a highly successful driver, won a Victorian titles in V8 Dirt Modified, Sprint Cars, you're our Defending Series champion in the Domestic Series. So how big was it or how difficult was it for you to go, I'll actually step aside and concentrate on someone else? Oh, look, we ran Avalon on a Wednesday night. Obviously, we ran two cars, but um, it, it is hard. It, as I said last night, last night's the first night I've sat and watched for probably five or six years, and to see your own car going round, it's, you get a bit of butterflies in the valley, whereas when you're in the car behind the wheel, you don't. You just jump in. It's what you do. It's what you you, what you want to do and what you know to do. But um, it, it is a bit nervous when you're standing on the sidelines thinking, well, you know, we, it's, anything can happen in sprint car racing, as we know, and you can turn it from a great car into a pile of nuts and bolts and torn up stuff in two seconds but you know it's a risk we take and it's a game we play and um definitely yeah it, the nerves were there a little bit more than when i'd normally be driving myself but um it's good as well as i said we're trying to learn a bit as well so i'm taking a step back a bit and trying to watch what they're doing and what shane's doing and you know at, at the same time we're all trying to have a bit of fun and i've got the same guys who have been helping me for years they're here so um yeah it's, it's a good package and look at the moment it's looking pretty good and hopefully we can roll on tomorrow Welcome to uh, the Speedway Show, and uh, thanks very much for being part of it, Shane Stewart. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on your show, and obviously it's always good to be back here in, in your country and, and enjoying myself, and, and well, it's supposed to be warm weather here. It's actually not real warm today in Warnable, but uh, uh, always a pleasure to come back and, and do a little bit of racing before we get busy in our schedule back home, so... Uh, obviously, uh, I, you know, happy to, to meet up with friends that I don't get to see very often. And and uh, so, yeah, it's very good to be back. Now, 
as you said before, you, you're about to start your season back home. Does this does this really help you driving wise to come out to Australia and get a couple of runs under your belt early? Absolutely, absolutely. Seat time is seat time, uh, and you know the thing is, some of my competitors that I race with are out here as well. So uh, it uh, you know when we get back home, we're only off for a couple of weekends, and we start racing down in Volusia in, in Florida. So to get the seat time here, it's still a four ten sprint car. It doesn't matter if it's in Australia or, or America; it's still the same. And uh, so I, I do. I think it's crucial to, to get yourself, you know, acclimated back. We can work out and do all this stuff in the gym, but there's nothing that compares to getting back in the seat and, and getting your getting your breathing right again. And and any time you take two or three months off, uh, it takes always a night or two to, to get acclimated back to things. So, uh, yeah, it's I think it's important for us to come down here and race whenever we can. You can get back in the car after some time off. And you can be fast, but it's that finesse, isn't it? That that feeling and those little bits. Absolutely, yeah. And and you know that's the thing. You can't work. You can't do that on a on a treadmill or, or working out on a on a, a piece of equipment in the gym. It's it's seat time, and uh, there's nothing that uh, you can put you can compare it to uh, other than just getting in there and driving. And and like you said, the little bitty pieces of stuff that you can't really do unless you're in the race car. So uh, it's important to to get down here and, and race and 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 uh, get back in that type of shape before we get started on the, on the Outlaw Tour. You're a professional racer, so ride hopping is nothing new to you. But tell us just how difficult is it to come out, forget that we're in another country with what you normally are, but to get into a new team, a new car, it's a team that you haven't worked with before, it's a car you haven't driven before. How difficult is that? Difficult, very difficult. And, and the thing is, it gets more and more difficult because... You know, you get acclimated to working with a group of guys um, that you work with day in and day out. Like our schedule at home is 90-something races. So you get used to, to working with them. Uh, they they can read you. Like we're married pretty much. We're, we're like a married couple. So my crew chief uh, knows what I'm thinking before I even st- you know say anything most of the time. When you come to a new team, you don't have that. You don't, and uh, it takes a little while to, to, to gain that confidence in each other. And sometimes you don't do it; it just doesn't happen. Uh, but you know, great example. I race cool cars in America. I come here. Brett has a cool car. That that side of it's uh, the same, but the components on the car are different. Uh, the way Brett might set the car up is different than what my crew chief does in America. So there's just a lot of little things uh, that that go into jumping into a car and, and trying to get up to speed and it, and it just it gets harder and harder to do um uh each year because everyone's got great equipment their motors run well the guys whether they race in america or australia the guys that are good uh, they race with those group of people all the time so if you go into their part of the world uh, that you're not used to on certain tracks or whatever it might be it's just hard to hard to get right up to speed but you know we're all professionals uh you know it's still a racetrack it's still a dirt track and you're still going around in circles so uh, after a few nights if you don't you know get up to speed there's you got to make a change or, or do something different now as a professional ride hopping is, is nothing new we've just spoke about that but how do you deal with the pressure because as a fan we see change Stewart's here fantastic this guy's fantastic we expect him to get in the car and be on the pace right from the start how difficult is that and how do you deal with that well, I, I tend to probably put a little bit too much pressure on myself. I always have, and I think that's uh, maybe a little bit of a fault, and maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but everybody's a little different in how they cope with it. Uh, myself, I, I look at it like, hey, look, you got, you know, the good example is you got a couple races leading up to the Classic. You know, you always have Avalon and Mount Gambia. I always feel like if you can get some things rolling at those first two events, get a little bit of confidence when you get to the Classic, you're going to typically have a pretty good showing and that's just the way i've looked at it um we struggled a little bit at avalon uh we made some changes uh made it similar to what i'm used to at home on and it's just little things like changing the throttle linkage and and changing the the wheel offsets on the front end and changing shocks uh which don't people don't think that it's a major thing but you do two or three of them uh and then it adds up so then we go to mount gambia we we qualify a lot better we race a lot better and now everyone's got a little bit bigger pep in their step, you know. They they get a little confidence, and and then the guys don't mind coming out here and working hard and, and trying to prepare the car for the classic. And uh, the last couple of times I've been out here, I've done the World Series, so I've been out here for two or three months, and I've had a lot of um, you know tr- seat time and, and track time 
uh, with that group of people where this year I've only been out here for two nights and then it goes straight in the classic. So I think we're going to be okay. Uh, we, we had a, a really good car at Mount Gambia and, and showed some good car speed and, and um, we're looking forward to the classic. Have you heard of Australian Highline Magazine? It's Australia's only totally free online digital speedway racing magazine. It's full of big, beautiful action and artistic images from some of Australia's best motorsport photographers. It's got national and international events, profiles, tech articles, history, comment and occasional controversial article all penned by some of the sport's leading journalists and columnists and it's all free. Australian Highline Magazine. Have a read today. Well, speaking of the classic, you won it back in uh, 2010 in a in a team that runs once a year and once a year only. Colin Bulmer's team. He just doesn't run any other time during the year. Bring puts a car together, and you're able to uh, to get in that win. This team here, Brett Milburn, uh, he's a series uh, winner. He's the current defending domestic series champion he's won plenty of races victorian titles and lots of classes does that lift your game knowing that uh, you're coming out and it's one of the little boys and, and you know that's better than say running for you've run for monty before and you've run for uh, uh performance warehouse and, and guys like that bill man which do you prefer the little guys or the big guys well it just depends on what you're wanting to do i think the if you're going to come out here and race for two or three months you've got to be with one of the big guys to be competitive now obviously um, you know, Brett and I discussed a lot of things about, you know, what I like in a race car. And like I said earlier, he had the cool chassis, which I think is a major part of, of getting a car to, to roll around the track nice. Um, but he also runs rider engines. That's what I'm used to at home. So there was a lot of things that was already in place here. Uh, and, the, and the thing is, it's so hard to come over here uh, and be competitive when you're only going to be in the race car for four nights because... You know, you got James McFadden and you got Robbie Farr and, and all these guys that are already up to speed, having a great summer, and it's hard to bust that bubble. And it's hard to come in here and beat those guys. So I tried to make sure as m many things as I could was in line and in place before I came over here and, and tried to do it. And and uh, so far, I mean, Brett's, you know, hasn't balked at, at trying to do certain things and, and buying tires and, and things that it takes to, to, to go fast. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's... If you're going to be here a long time, I think you need to be with one of the guys that race full time and, and, and be with a crew mechanic like Buzzy. But I think if you're going to come over for a short, short period of time, I think you can be successful with a, with a group of guys that Brett has. Well, Brett's uh, he's putting some effort in behind you. Of course, he was the first Australian to bring out your co-teammate, Kyle Larson, a couple of years back uh, in, in Brett's car. But he's also brought Pete Caporn over from West Australia. Now, Pete had a very long and successful career with the Cricky Motorsport team and Brooke Tattnall. How have you find working with him so far? Great. And that was one of the key things. Like, I, I, I told Brett, I said, man, I'd love to come and do it, but... To, to, to do it, I want to try to get a, a good mechanic if we can. And, and of course, Pete was uh, one of the first names that got brought up. And we kind of uh, brought Pete out of a retirement. Um, kind of gave him a hard time because he looked like an albino. He's been sitting behind a desk and doesn't, hadn't seen the sun in quite some time. But uh, I knew Pete. Uh, I've raced with Pete. And um, when we were doing the World Series with Bill Mann, they, that team was always a team to beat with him and, and Brooke. And, uh, Pete's no dummy. He knows his, his way around the race car, and, and it's already kind of proven itself. We struggled a little bit at Avalon, like I said, and, and uh, we got our heads together and thought about some things that we needed to change, and, and it made a vast improvement for Mount Gambia. So, um, But, you know, that was one of the key ingredients that I wanted to make sure that was in place before I, I came over here. So it's been been a pleasure working with Pete so far. And the team itself, how do you find the team? Good equipment, good enough? Yeah, it's good enough to win the race, absolutely. Obviously, uh, you know, a classic is, is like a Knoxville Nationals or a Kings Royal. you got to have a lot of things fall in your lap to, to win the race. There's 100-and-something cars. Uh, you you got to have a good qualifying lap. Uh, you got to get through your heat races and, and make sure you pass cars every time you hit the track. And uh, I think if we can do that and keep our nose clean, stay out of wrecks, I think we're going to have a good shot. I, you, can't, you can't win this race and be out of the top two or three rows, so... Um, hopefully everything shakes out well for us and we can have a good showing. I mean, you know, Brett spent a lot of money to not only get myself over here, but to get Pete from, from Perth and, and, um, you know, he's had, you know, got a little special paint scheme for the race car and, and, uh, he's, 
he's done a, 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 a put a lot of money of, of his own dime into this to, to make all this happen. So hopefully we can have a good showing for him. Now, as an American, you know, you guys race on probably a lot more slick tracks than we do here. Although the weather-wise tonight, I, I suggest the track's probably going to be a little bit hooky. What's your preference around Warrnambool? You've raced here enough with both conditions. What's your preference? Uh, slick, for sure. Warrnambool, uh, when you get grip in the racetrack, it's probably one of the most demanding uh, racetracks that you can race on. It's not a very big track, but the G-forces that you go through, uh, going through the corners, when this place has grip, is pretty insane. Uh, when you're going around here in 10-second laps, uh, that's getting after it in a sprint car. So, uh typically the racing is way better too when it gets slick so obviously if if mother nature throws her hand into the equation you can't help that but you know the guys at at, uh at warnable they do a great job and and they always have and i know that they're going to try to do the best they can with the with what they get dealt with so um you know like i said earlier when we first started taping you know it's always a pleasure to come out here and race especially at this place and i know it's a special race for not just uh australians but americans as well and I've been fortunate enough to, to win one, and it'd be great to win another one. And how much do you want to win another one after you've won this? This the classic would rank fairly highly in your uh, in your repertoire. Absolutely, yeah. At the time, it was, uh, and it still is, one of my biggest wins I've had in my career. And you know, it's it's like Donnie says about Knoxville Nationals. Once you get one, you want to keep doing it. And uh, you know, we're all super competitive. Uh, I think that's what keeps us going. You know, I've been racing now uh, for for uh, 16 professional or professionally for now 16 years and and that's what gets me up out of bed is is trying to win big races like this and you know uh when it's all said and done you know when people look back on your career it, it's the big wins like the classics and the king's royals and the knoxville nationals and stuff like that it's what people continue to talk about so hopefully we can put another one on on my resume Cape Horn, highly successful crew chief with the Cricket Motorsports and Brooke Tatnell for all those years. Been in semi-retirement. You've been brought out to turn the spanners on Shane Stewart. I think that's a good reason to come out of retirement. Yeah, it is. It was a good opportunity. It was uh, just short and sharp, just for the weekend. And that's uh, that's what really suited me as well. And obviously knowing that uh, Brett was going to give us the equipment that we could do, you know, at least make an effect. So, And obviously Shane, just a, a world-class driver. So it was a uh, good reason to come out of retirement, but it's only for the weekend. Well, after all the years you did on the road, you know, no one can blame you for wanting to kick back a little. And these sort of deals are fantastic for you, aren't they? You still get your feel of it, you're still involved in it, but you're not doing the daily grind of mile after mile after mile. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's certainly, um, you know, life with two kids now, it's uh, it's great to be at home as well. So, you know, it's, it's tough on the road, and uh, I did my due course, and that's uh, that's why I like it right now. You went head-to-head with, with Shane o- over a few years when he was in the Bill Mann car and you were turning the Spanners for Brook and the Cricky Motorsport. Now you're together. How are you finding that? Uh, yeah, well, look, it took us uh, a night at Avalon just to just to find our feet. Uh, two totally different drivers, and, you know, I work with a lot of different drivers as well. So it's, uh, it's something that you just can't flick your fingers and, and work it out. If there was a magic recipe, everyone would know it. So we got it worked out. Uh, last night we were obviously a little bit better. So hopefully roll on to the Classic. Well, you won the Classic before. You'd be, be happy to get another one. Oh, certainly. I mean, I'm sure there'll be, uh, what, 107, 108 teams that would certainly like to win it as well. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do everything we need to do today and uh, we'll make sure we're, uh, we're putting our best foot forward and we'll see what happens. And you're confident in the driver, obviously, and uh, I'll say you're fairly confident in the equipment that Brett Milburn supplied you as well. Yeah, exactly. As I said, Brett's, uh, Brett's given us every, every opportunity that we can uh, at least uh, be competitive. So we just get it right on the night. You need a bit of luck. That's just uh, We know that with this sport. So we'll do our best and uh, we've put it together today and just been through everything. So we're ready to go. Without giving anything away, give us uh, just a couple of little things that that differ, some of the things that you find that Shane does like or doesn't like compared to guys you've worked with before, say Brook Tunnel, for instance. Oh, look, you know, every driver's different. You know, I don't care what anybody says, you've got to make the driver comfortable. So, uh, look, the first night Shane wasn't really comfortable, so we changed a lot of things, obviously, yesterday leading up to the King's Challenge. So, look, he uh, he likes a bit of a freer car by the seams of things, and, uh, look, we just needed to tweak the throttle, tweak the... uh, the heel pads, bits and pieces, but, uh, you know, as I said, every driver's different, and uh, that's just what you need to work out. You would have been satisfied last night at Mount Gambier uh, with those changes and the work you did because you stuck the thing on the front row. Yeah, exactly, yeah, just a, a bit of a reward for effort, especially with all the other guys, you know, all these crew guys as well. They're all putting in a lot of work, so it was good to um, get him to where he was comfortable and obviously uh, with the pace there and uh, all that rain, I'll tell you, that uh, annoys everybody. Well, good luck for tonight. Thanks very much. 
magazines, big moments in Speedway. Takes us back to the start of the SRA Eureka Garage and Shed Sprint Car season at Heartlands Mama Raceway. And there we see Tim Hutchins, the Tasmanian Tornado, taking a wild ride over, tripping over West Australian Scotty Riley. You'll see in the slow mo replay here, Scott Riley from Kalgoorlie. Have a little bit of a moment with rookie Stephen Sparks and Tornado. Tim Hutchins was charging through. Big lead this stage, didn't need to do anything silly. He was going to make the A main. And just the speed trips over Scotty Riley. Second place runner Matthew Reed trying to come through here. Slides underneath the flipping Tim Hutchins, tears his wing off. And there we see Hutchins in the wall actually taking a chunk of the concrete out, damaging the fence and uh, ending his night. Here we go to the A main. And Domain Ramsey in the two part-time sprint car racer this season actually beat the King of Moama, which is Grant Anderson in the 37. Beat him off the line, took the lead. Here we go, a battle for the lead and a big moment for Grant Anderson. A nasty end for end down the back straight. We saw there we got a little bit of uh, the infield concrete, unsettled the car just a little. And out he came. 110 grand just a week or two prior in the Jackpot Invitational. Probably spent all of that 10 grand here tonight repairing the damage. Have a look at the slow mo. We see Domain Ramsey on the outside. Grant Anderson, the Moama Master. Gets down a little tight. The track was a little rough, to be fair. Got some concrete infield there, did Anderson, which probably pushed the car out a little. You can see there, he's got the left front over the concrete. Unsettled the car, came out, and uh, contact with Jermaine Ramsey. Ramsey, lucky to not go upside down also. But uh, let me see, Grant Anderson, nasty in for render, just behind the big screen. Thankfully he was okay, walked away, but uh, the car was, well, she was pretty sad after that one. The next up was third season youngster Luke Walker. Having a big solo flip there down in turn three, four, same event. And unfortunately for Luke, that was a season ending crash right there with a number of broken vertebrae. We see here, as I said before, the track was just a little rough. It was due to uh, a lot of weather, a lot of rain leading up to it. Car got a little unsettled down the back straight, carried the front wheels. Then as he came down to turn into turn four, or turn three, sorry, you see he hooks it in there pretty hard, probably a little too hard. Again, got on the infield concrete there. Car got a little loose, biked up. Brings it back down, bites in and over it goes. Nothing to worry about right here. But this piece at the end with that flat left rear, that sudden stop right there. I can tell you from personal experience, that is what did the damage to young Luke ending his season, unfortunately. So indeed, the final round of the Eureka Garage and Sheds SRA Sprint Car Season and the Series Decider. The big battle between Tim Van Ginnigan in the Harry Drosty owned Victoria 36 and Brett Milburn, the defending Series Champion in the Victoria 68. They would battle out the championship, but meanwhile out front was the local hero, the real deal, Jamie Veal, taking it up. 
Chu, the Simpson speedster. Timmy Rankin, the 47. Grant Anderson, who we saw just a moment ago, that big end for Ender, sitting back there in third position. And already we can see throughout the heat race and the track has blown off as we say it's widened out we've got cars running right up the top on the wall we've got cars running down on the bottom on the pole line so plenty of racing opportunities plenty of passing it's great to see when the track spreads out like this you get cars on the top you get cars on the bottom you get passing all around the place as opposed to sometimes when it's hooky it can just be one lane because everybody's fast on the top or on the bottom and sometimes not as much passing as we'd like however tonight we've got plenty but we can see the real deal Jamie Veal look how close he runs the wall there he will get closer than that I guarantee you takes a lot of commitment to run up tight on the wall but I'm told never having had the opportunity to race here at Wall, I'm told that it is an awesome feeling once you work it out and you know you've got the confidence to do it it is an absolute buzz. Aaron Molino in the 52 had some great success at Waterball over the season. And again in the mix. Not sure what it is, but uh, whenever Molino, or Molly as he's known, gets to Waterball, he really steps up that extra little bit. He's quick everywhere, mind you, but at Warrnambool he just seems to come up against the big dogs, the big teams like Jamie Veal in the SWI, the Southwest Industries, Victoria 35, we see there. Molly just steps up a little. Look how close those guys out of the wall. That was Tim Van Ginnigan going through. He needed to finish about five spots ahead of Brett Milburn to take the championship, which would have been his first. And there's Brett Milburn in the picture, so he's uh, just not too far behind. Shadowing Tim Van Ginnigan, his nearest challenger for the series championship. Young Daniel Sayer on the bottom in the New South Wales 16 entry. It's been down to one wall on a number of occasions. When Sutton, the South Australia 20, we just saw there for a moment. He was a chance to win the championship early on, but his season's fallen away towards the end. And David Murkoff, the two-time national champion, and the Victoria Radiator, Maddie Easton, just recently announced that they will be doing World Series sprint cars next season. Rusty Hickman in the 40 there. Great story from young Rusty. Broke his neck right near the start of the season uh, and it could have been absolutely disastrous and he's come back just a few weeks ago and has been instantly on the pace which is absolutely fantastic to see Milburn there running around trying to do what he needs to do is Jamie Veal still in front but now down to the bottom is Grant Anderson has moved to the top and we've, we've lost Timmy Rankin who was sitting there in third place he seems to have uh, dropped down the order or disappeared onto the infield so Anderson now up there in the second place. He went to the white cars already. Bill a mid-track line there. Anderson up on the top. As they try to negotiate their way through the lapped cars. We see there, Bill swinging to the bottom. Looking for something down the bottom. Looking for that extra bit of drive. Hickman, as I said, great story. Could have been a career-ending crash. Could have uh, had disastrous effects for his personal life. Could have ended up in a wheelchair, a quadriplegic, a paraplegic. Uh, thankfully, none of that. Very worrying for a small, for a little amount of time for his parents, Sandy and Darren. But uh, since he's come back, he has just come back with a vengeance. So Brett Milburn, for us in the Mitsubishi. Said defending the series champion and it all comes down to this one event right here right now between himself and Tim Van Gittigan. He is about to be lapped by our second place man Grant Anderson obviously Jamie Veal has already gone past as Brett said before in the early part of the show when we're talking to him about Shane Stewart this is one track where it just seems to be lacking that, that tenth of a second that makes all the difference been working very hard on, on trying to find that extra little bit of speed. He's not scared to go up the top here at Portable. We know he loves the top at Avalon. Uh, he's not scared to run up the top here. It's just right at the moment he seems to feel that there's a better drive down the bottom. And there's our early second place man. In fact, our pole sitter, Jimmy Rankin, being lapped by Jamie Beal. So how quickly he fell out. Possibly with a tyre issue, as we can see. The footage there, the track is black. A 
the meat, it's hard and slick, it's tearing up tyres and things will be looking for the moisture. Well, they'll be waiting for what uh, is called for the rubber to come in. When the rubber comes in, it means it's actually laid rubber down on the dirt track and that's where the drive will be. It might be up the top, it's more likely to be on the bottom. So sometimes these guys will go searching, they'll do a lap or two up the top, they'll do a lap or two down the bottom, try to find where it is working best. As Anderson we see now. Also with the wing back a fair way, so the top wing is adjustable. And put that into the boot. On a slick track you tend to push the wing back a little, give you that bit more drive off the back end. Milburn on the bottom. Rankin, as I said, was in second place, now he's already been lapsed. Another young gun in the 77 at Braden Park. He's had a stellar season as well. Some fantastic results for the young guy. There's the two-time champ, David Murcott. Two-time national champion, trying not to be passed by the second, or should I say lapped, by the second-place car. Grant Anderson has already been lapped by Jamie Veal. So this is a fairly dominant performance by Veal. Also known as the real deal. A tag which commentators love to put on him, but which he personally hates. We are told. Just saw for a moment there as a chicken flag flies and Veal takes a win. Smoke coming off the left rear of the 88 of David Murcott. So congratulations to Brett Milburn, also picking up the series win by a narrow margin over Tim Van Ginnigan.